As you have inevitably become aware, when you're writing programs, you occasionally mess things up. These errors that we put in our programs are often referred to as bugs. Now, the term bug actually has a long history in the engineering field. It came into the computer science field when people were working with the ENIAC computer, and an actual moth went into the computer and caused a short circuit, and they had to find it. At this time, of course, machines during the ENIAC era were the size of gymnasiums, so tracking down this literal bug in the machine was uh, a bit challenging. Today, it's not bugs that fly in and cause problems. When there's an error in your program, it's because you put it there. So the terminology is a little bit off. It might make you feel better than you really should about what's going on. But these errors come in different forms. And so it's good to understand what these different forms are, both for communicating with other people and to help you know how to deal with them. In order to illustrate this, we're going to write a little program we'll call it bugs.scala. I'm going to import stuff so that I can do user input. And then I am going to write one of the earlier functions that we did a long time ago, the factorial. So it takes an int, it gives back an int. And if n is less than two, we give back one, else we give back n times fact of n. And to start off, we'll just print line fact of five. So I believe this is a happy working function or program. We'll see here in just a second because who knows, maybe I mistyped something. Oh, yes, <laughs> I did indeed. That's not the type of error I want to show first, though, so I'm going to <laughs> fix the code, and we'll run it. Okay, happy working gives us back 120. There are some different ways that we could break this, and we'll start off with the first type of error that we want to talk about, and that's the syntax error. The syntax error gets its name because we actually mess up something in the syntax of the language. We write something that is not valid Scala. Here are some examples. One. I misspell import. Now if I run this, I get a little message. It says error semicolon expected but dot found and it points to right here, which tells us we should look at this line a little bit closer. Oh indeed, we misspelled something. How about if, for example, I don't know if any of my viewers have done this, but you leave off the parentheses on an if. At least right now, Scala requires those though there is there has been discussion about changing that rule well error parentheses expected but identifier found okay with a little caret pointing here other examples recursive functions have to have return types what if we leave that off error recursive method needs uh, fact needs return result type there we go fairly simple and straightforward some of the less straightforward ones might be, you leave off a parentheses at the end of the line there, and then we get an error at the very bottom down here, and it says expected closed parentheses. Leaving off parentheses or brackets, sometimes your error message comes out on the wrong line. But the thing about error messages is they're informative. Okay? The syntax errors tell you a lot. They give you a line number, they give you a description. Some of them even tell you something about how they think you should fix it. For example, I don't know if anyone's run into this one, but if you leave off the equal sign on a function, illegal start of declaration, possible cause missing equal in front of current method body. Very straightforward. It tells you pretty much exactly what's going on. I've actually had some students in the past write me and they copied and pasted this error message into their email and said, what's wrong? And my response was, read the whole error message. So syntax errors, while the error messages aren't always perfectly clear, they give you a lot of information, they help you to solve them. And basically, if you have to have an error, syntax errors are the way to go. The next class of error is the runtime error. So we only know a few ways to create run, runtime errors. One of them 
can be to, due to user problems. If I replace the hard-coded 5 with a readint, and I run this, well, if I enter a 5, I get the result that I expect. But what happens if I enter ABC? Then I get this. And this is something that you've probably seen before. This is a stack trace. At the top of the stack trace, it gives us information about what's going on. It says there was a number format exception for input ABC. And then it has all of these lines. This top one, so it tells you something about the method or function that you're in, and then what file and what line. Well, we didn't write number format exception. We didn't write integer. So we can't help with those things. But we are writing bugs. And so it turns out that your code, when you're writing scripts, will be inside of something called main. And it tells you on line 5 here, we have a problem. Well, hey, that's line 5. So you can go through and read a stack trace and figure out what's going on. It gives you information about things. Note that the information that it gives you is where it crashed. And that's the one downside of runtime errors is that a runtime error can't or tells you less information about what you actually did wrong and just tells you where it figured it out, where something went wrong in the runtime of the program. For example, another runtime error that you could have would be if we had an array and somehow actually here let's do it this way somehow you go out of bounds on this so well a equals a array dot fill 10 values <clears throat> each of which is five it's not a very interesting array but we have one and then I have that And so I run this. I'm going to enter 5, so that's that'll be happy. But we get an array index out of bounds exception, value negative 1. And if we look here, it says, hey, line 10 caused this error. Though it's quite possible that this would have been inside of code where a sub i is what we wanted, where this was the valid code. The problem, of course, is that we made i the, the wrong value. So when you get a runtime error, you do have to do a little bit more thinking and tracking down of what it was that went wrong for you. So that's the runtime error. You get information about it. The program has proper syntax. It is proper Scala. It compiles and it starts running, but then it crashes at some point during the run and you get this. The error that I had the first time we did this was another runtime error. Now, I believe even if I scroll all the way to the top, we're not going to see the top of this stack trace. When you get the same line calling itself over and over again, that tells you that you created an infinite recursion, which is what this does because we call it with 5, which calls with 5, which calls with 5, which calls with 5, and we wind up running out of memory on the stack, uh, which we'll actually talk a little bit more about in the next video. Our third type of error is actually the worst type of error that you can get. And that is the logic error. And we can demonstrate a logic error very simply by changing our base case from a 1 to a 0. Now when I run this, I enter 5. Oop. Let's make it so that i is actually a happy number so that it doesn't crash on us. I'll enter my 5. And I get 0 instead of 120. Well, clearly 0 is the wrong factorial. So we have to figure out what went wrong. Now for this particular program, it's not that hard. There's only one line of code that we have to look at. But as a general rule, the problem here is this didn't tell us anything other than giving us an output and we can say, oh, that's not the right output. It didn't help us out by giving a stack trace. It didn't give us any informative messages that things went wrong. We just happen to know that's wrong. For larger programs, logic errors can be very difficult to deal with. Imagine you have thousands or even millions of lines of code and it spits out a number that's not the right value. Then you have to go digging into the code and it's very helpful, this is where you start putting in print statements or maybe you use a visual debugger, a topic that would, should be covered in later classes. But you have to go looking around to figure out where it is that you messed up the logic in order to find these. 
So these are not very informative. They can be very time consuming to find. So once again, our three types of errors, we have the syntax error. They're actually the best. You might be sick of them right now, but they do give you a lot of information about how to fix them. Then there's the runtime errors, which they're not as nice. The other problem with runtime errors is for example, with this a sub i, maybe I have this inside of some if, and it only happens sometimes. Syntax errors, are, if they're there, they're always there. The compiler will always find them. Runtime errors might happen on one input and not happen on another input. And so you actually have to test lots of things. And then there's logic errors, which have all the flaws of a runtime error, except they don't give you any information. You don't get a stack trace. You don't get any line numbers. You don't get a description of what went wrong. All you know is that's the wrong output. So hopefully that gives you some insight into the errors that you run into and uh, yeah, allows you to think more clearly about the coding process.